Welcome back. This time we're talking about Timeless, Season 1, Episode 5, The Alamo. This time our heroes have to follow Flynn back to March 5th, 1836, just days before the massacre at the Alamo, an event that would fuel the Texas Revolution, leading to its independence and later it joining the United States. Once again, Flynn is trying to mess with history, and once again, we're not really sure exactly his end goal, but we do know that he was trying to wipe out the significance of the Alamo Massacre, which would have meant no Texas independence, nor later statehood. He does this by giving advice to Santa Ana, as well as infiltrating the Alamo and killing Colonel Travis, who wrote a letter that was later reprinted across the country, fueling the flames of the Texas Revolution. As a result of Flynn's meddling, Lucy, Wyatt, and Rufus are caught in the Alamo when Santa Ana attacks early, which without our hero's help would have resulted in an even worse massacre because all of the women and children are trapped inside the Alamo and had no chance to escape. Fortunately, they're able to escape at the last second, and with Lucy rewriting the letter, history more or less moves forward as it did. Like with the previous episode, Party at Castle Valar, the long-term storylines really didn't get that much advancement in this episode, but we did get a lot of character development, with a lot of that focused on Wyatt in this episode, like Rufus got a lot of attention in the previous one. And we get the first hints of that in the opening moments. Since I've mentioned it in several of my previous videos, I do want to point out that the show does seem to have returned to its sort of standard opening, where we get a scene from the past pre-meddling, and then we move on into the rest of the episode. This episode and the previous one both then jumped into individual glances of our three heroes, seeing where their present day storylines are taking them. In the case of Wyatt, we find out that he's being fired, because in the previous four missions to the past, he was unable to kill Flynn. This is also something that I've mentioned several times, wondering how long his superiors would accept failure. And as the new agent tells him, they're in a results-oriented business, and he has not been able to provide the results that they want. And although it was unlikely that Wyatt would be killed in this episode, introducing the possibility of him being fired and that his replacement was waiting in the wings really added some extra tension to this episode, especially later when he decides he wants to stay and die with his fellow soldiers at the Alamo. And we learn through the course of the story that this is because of this mission that he was on in which he was the only member of his troop to survive because he was chosen to escort out this intel that had to get to their superiors while his fellow soldiers and friends died ensuring that he escaped. Now, a lot of times shows will try to parallel their characters' ongoing issues with whatever's going on in that particular episode. And it can get very overt at times. And honestly, when they go too far, it's, it's almost eye-rolling inducing, I will say. And I thought that this was where this was going because it was just so on the nose with the issue of the Alamo and his um, previous mission. And I guess because it was less about the issues that he was dealing with in the present, being his being fired and him feeling that he had failed the mission, and more about an actual event that he experienced and how the Alamo is a very famous example of things like that, as we see when um, the young boy has to take the letter to ensure that the message is received as it did in the original timeline. So in that, I really didn't mind as much as I would have thought this on-point parallels between Wyatt's past and the Alamo. It doesn't hurt that the acting in this episode was some of the best we've gotten from this show so far, especially when Lucy is essentially begging him to not die and talking about how she needs him and she trusts him to protect her and the mission when they're on these um, travels through time. And despite the various arguments that these two have had over the course of this episode and previous ones, it really did feel pretty genuine. And a strong character moment, the one that ultimately built to what we got at the end, which I'll get to in just a minute. And since I just mentioned the acting, I do want to also point out that the guest stars in this episode playing Bowie and Davy Crockett and um, even Santa Ana um, really all did a great job and really elevated this episode. Now, as far as our three heroes, Lucy probably had the least to do. And a lot of what she did do was to further develop Wyatt's side of the story. 
But we do get to see her at the beginning um, kind of getting reprimanded by her mother, talking about how she's basically throwing her life away, that she's um, moved away from her fiancé, moved in with her mother, um, has taken a sabbatical from her job. And it really stung when her mother did throw that line out about how she was throwing her life away, because essentially she kind of is throwing this life away, but it's because she's trying to reclaim the life that she lost, something that she can't even tell her mother about. Although it's a relatively small detail at this point, because we don't know anything else, we did learn that Lucy's biological father was a professor while her mother was a student, and that he apparently had political aspirations, which would lead me to assume that he's going to be some kind of high-level politician, and just because these shows always do this, probably have some kind of connection to Rittenhouse. And speaking of Rittenhouse, we did get to see the fallout of Rufus's confrontation with the Rittenhouse agent at the end of the previous episode, where they were able to hack his car, stop it, and threaten his family if he doesn't continue to spy on Wyatt and Lucy. And if we didn't have the later scenes with Wyatt struggling with the idea that he was going to once again have to leave soldiers to die while he escaped, I would say that the opening scene with Rufus and Connor would have been the most powerful scene of this episode. And it was done really subtly. You have the scene beginning with Rufus asking sarcastically to Connor why he's late. And it's because that he um, refuses to drive his car because it was hacked. Although you can see the concern on Connor's face, as well as him mentioning that he did not know that Rittenhouse would try to contact Rufus directly, he approaches this in a very logical manner, a very scientific manner, being that he knows that they can't cross Rittenhouse, so the idea of doing it is off the table. And he just expects Rufus to see that same logic and is almost confused by him being so upset. Because why should you be upset at a fact? And the fact is, they can't cross Rittenhouse. Which, of course, really upsets Rufus even more, and he accuses Connor of being complicit and even possibly part of the threats to his family. And that's where you really see the hurt on his face. And he sort of deflects it by just saying, well, this is the situation. But you can really see that that cut deep on Connor, and I don't think it's going to be something that will just be brushed under the rug. The last interesting thing he says is when he's talking about how Rufus has to do what they're wanting him to do, and follows up with, we both do. Once again, alluding to the fact that Connor is just as much under the thumb of Rittenhouse as Connor, uh, as Rufus is. Now, I really haven't mentioned much about Flynn in this episode because, frankly, he's only in, like, three scenes. Two with Santa Anna and one with Colonel Travis when he kills him. But it's that last scene with Santa Anna that was really interesting. They've been building him up as this sort of misunderstood anti-hero. Um, or at least that's the way he wants people to see him. That he has this noble cause, which is to rid Rittenhouse from history itself. And if several people have to die along the way, he feels that these ends justify the means. However, we do find in this episode, there is a line he's not willing to cross. And that's when Santa Ana flies the red flag before his attack, meaning that there's going to be no quarter and everyone within the Alamo is going to die, including all of the women and children. Now remember, he is supposed to have killed his wife and child, prior to defecting and disappearing two, year, two or so years before reappearing while stealing the time machine. And if he indeed did not, as I suspect, kill his wife and child, I can understand why this would be a line he would not want to cross. Every time we've seen him up to this point, even when he's trying to convince Lucy of his um, noble cause, he has come across as very self-righteous and just so sure of what he's doing, no matter who in the way gets hurt. This is the first time we've really seen him kind of out of control when he realizes that the, mo the events that he's set into motion are going to lead to so many innocent deaths. And he really tries hard to convince Santa Ana to not do it. I mean, that's essentially the last time we see him in this episode. My guess is, is that he left so he would not have to witness the carnage that he wrought uh, by changing the past. But it was an interesting character development, and I'm, and I'm curious to see where they go with this in future episodes. 
So of course all of the character moments, especially what we saw with Wyatt, leads to the end, which is when Wyatt is going to get fired because he once again failed in his mission. But Lucy and Rufus step up and say that they will quit if they indeed fire Wyatt. Now to realize just how powerful a moment that is for Lucy and Rufus, we have to remember just what they could potentially be giving up if their bluff is called and they're indeed thrown off the program as well. Lucy's trying to get her sister back, and the only way she's going to do that is to stay on the team. Meanwhile, Rufus is supposed to be spying on the others. He's also the only pilot, and if he were to quit, I'm betting Rittenhouse would be even more upset than it when he was refusing to um, record. I did have a moment where I was wondering whether the relationships between these three had really grown to the point that they were willing to throw all of that away for Wyatt. But I think overall it was an earned moment, especially with some of the scenes that we got in the previous episode between Wyatt and Lucy, as well as some of the moments we got in this episode with Rufus and Crockett, which gave him a better perspective of someone like Wyatt. Then of course we have Lucy overhearing Wyatt tell his story about that horrible mission, and then her risking her own life to ensure that he didn't stay behind. So as I said, I had a moment where I wasn't sure if it was earned, but it, uh, the more I think about it, the more I believe it was. Now I haven't mentioned any of my primary questions, although I touched on a few of them with this discussion, but as I said, this was, was not an episode about furthering the major plot points and more about just further developing our characters. And I have no problem with that, especially when we have a pretty fun and honestly quite emotional action-packed episode like we did here. So what did you think of this episode? Do you like these more character-driven episodes or do you want more um, main story plot development? Not to say that we can't get both, it just seems so far we're getting a little bit more of one or the other um, in these first five episodes. As always, you can subscribe to my channel, check out some other TV and movie reviews, and until next time, be sure to memorize all of history's famous letters.